Key Hunters, Chapter 2. Water sprayed against Evan's face. He breathed the salty air and held tight to Cleo's waist as they jetted across a crowded harbor. They were on a jet ski, and Cleo was at the helm. They wore matching wetsuits, each with a gold diamond on the chest. Where are we? Evan called over the roar of the engine. No idea, Cleo said over her shoulder, but I've always wanted to drive one of these things. She weaved around several boats. Water splashed into the air. Evan heard a roar behind them. He glanced back to see a red speedboat. The men on board were wearing dark face masks. These weren't the sort of face masks for deep sea diving. They were the sort for bank robbing. Does this thing go faster? Evan asked. I've got it at half speed, she said. Try three quarters, Evan said. He glanced behind them and saw the masked men pointing at them. Who are they? Cleo cried out. We don't have time to ask their names, Evan said, and they don't exactly look friendly anyway. Cleo twisted her wrist and the jet ski shot forward. But within seconds, the boat caught up. Evan reached around Cleo and pressed a button on the handlebars that looked like a puffy cloud. White smoke poofed out behind them. Turn right, Evan shouted. Cleo yanked the handlebars. They shot between two small fishing boats. The red boat darted through the cloud and circled around until they were once again on Cleo and Evan's tail. That only slowed them down for a second, Cleo said. What should we do, Evan said. Cleo leaned forward and hit the throttle. The jet ski pounded against the water and they sped even faster. Evan almost slipped off the seat, but somehow he managed to hold on. The red boat was still gaining on them. I have a plan, Cleo said. I hope your plan includes not getting run over by a boat filled with thugs, Evan said. Then he saw it. Cleo was driving straight towards a low bridge that connected two points of the harbor. The path underneath it looked narrow, maybe too narrow. We're not gonna make it, Evan said. Sure we will, Cleo said. The red boat had almost caught up to them. They could hear one of the thugs over the boat's deafening motor. We have you now, Agent Cleo and Agent Evan. Faster, Evan screamed. This is as fast as it goes, Cleo cried. Evan reached around Cleo and pressed another button. This one looked like a tiny flame. The engine roared and the jet ski rocketed through the narrow path under the bridge. The masked men barely had time to leap clear before their boat slammed into the bridge and exploded. Flames burst towards them, licking at their backs. Evan and Cleo circled around to see the masked men bobbing in the water. Hmm, Cleo said. What's wrong, Evan asked. We must be spies, right? Aren't we supposed to say something clever right now? Evan thought for a moment. How about nice day for a swim? Cleo shook her head. Evan felt a buzzing against his thigh. He, finished, he fished a phone out of his pocket. The screen read, Avery Phillips. A man's head appeared. Agent Evan, the man said, are you and Agent Cleo fooling with the agency's jet ski? Before Evan could answer, the man said, well, enough of that, return to base at once. Where is base, Evan asked. You're spies, the man said. Figure it out. Okay. You're supposed to say Roger, Avery said. Who's Roger? Avery sighed. Roger means you've received the message. Um, Roger? Then you're supposed to say Wilco, Avery added. That means you'll do what I've asked. Roger, Evan said again. And Wilco, Avery said. Roger and Wilco, Evan said. Avery shook his head. The screen went black. So where are we going? Cleo asked as they puttered along the edge of the harbor. There, Evan said, pointing to a battered garage door. The building looked like it hadn't seen a coat of paint in a century. What makes you think so? Evan traced the gold diamond on his wetsuit, then pointed. Above the weathered garage hung a crooked sign with a gold diamond painted on it. Cleo steered the jet ski toward it. As they approached, the door opened. Floodlights powered on and a man in a crisp suit and tie helped them onto the dock. Evan recognized him as Avery Phillips. Avery held out a dollar bill. It had been torn in half. I'm sorry, Evan said. I don't accept tips. Especially torn up dollars, Cleo added. What are we going to buy with that? Avery smiled. Please check your pocket. Evan tucked his hand into his pocket and pulled out a torn dollar bill. Avery held it alongside his own. They fit perfectly, like puzzle pieces. You can never be too careful, Avery said. There are imposters everywhere. Agents Evan and Cleo, welcome to acronym. Acronym, Cleo said. Agency for the Capture and Research of Nefarious Masterminds, Avery said. There's no why, Evan said. Pardon me, Avery said. An acronym is when you put together the first letter to a bunch of words to spell another, he explained. You're missing the Y word. Avery stiffened. Well, we can't all be perfect acronym makers, can we? Now please, follow me. He led them to an old wooden door and began pressing different nail heads. Then he pushed on one of the hinges and the door swung open. It may not look like it, but this is high-tech security at work. If you don't get the sequence right, you're in for a nasty shock. He motioned for them to enter and pulled the door shut behind them. This room was nothing like the beat-up garage they had just left. A huge screen covered the back wall. Agents in suits sat hunched over computer terminals. In the far corner, 
A man wearing a black jumpsuit led a group through some tough looking martial arts moves. This is seriously cool, Evan whispered. Seriously, Cleo said. Avery smiled. Welcome to the secret base of acronym. The end of chapter two.